Clark County Today is presented by Connell Real Estate. Hire an agent, get a team. Learn more by visiting ConnellRealEstate.com. Hello everyone, Jacob Graneman here with your Tuesday night edition of the Clark County Today update of the stories we're following for you. Let's dive in. Clark County Public Health today said there have been four deaths due to COVID-19 since yesterday, the highest single death toll since the start of the pandemic. Another 166 people have tested positive, bringing the total number of cases to 5,783 with 77 fatalities. The county also updated their rate of new cases per 100,000 people, which jumped from 131 last week to nearly 172 this week. Hospitalizations also rose sharply since Monday with 45 confirmed and 8 suspected cases taking up nearly 8.5% of available bed space. New data on testing shows over 7% of people tested between October 18th and 24th were positive, up from 5.5% the week before. Clark County is far from alone in seeing a concerning rise in new COVID-19 cases. During a press briefing today, State Health Officer Dr. Kathy Lofi says cases are rising for all ages statewide, raising concerns that hospitalizations could soon spike and strain health care resources. Lofi says the rise of cases comes even as testing levels have remained largely the same. In Clark County, fewer than 5,000 tests were done between October 18th and the 24th, down from 7,000 per week in late September and early October. That's an indication, according to public health, that there is actually more of the disease circulating in the community rather than just more cases being found. During our election night broadcast last week, we had the pleasure of interviewing Clark County Councilor Gary Medvegi, who had won re-election to the council with a 15-point victory in the November 3rd general election. Medvegi shared with us what he sees as some of the challenges facing the council moving forward, including the upcoming review of the Home Rule Charter, support of law enforcement, and permitting of the code enforcement reform. At the time, the other race in the general election for a seat on the council was far from decided. The initial election results in the race in the District 3 showed Democrat Jesse James with an advantage of 1,110 votes over Republican Karen Bowerman. Medvedge told us on election night that he was hopeful that Bowerman could overcome the deficit and become the third conservative on the five-member county council. It seems Medvedge has received his wish. As of Monday's election results, Bowerman has moved ahead of James by 1,649 votes, with an estimated 2,500 remaining ballots to count. With Medvedge and Bowerman hoping to team with like-minded council chair Eileen Quiring, we share with you some more of Medvedge's thoughts on the future, what the future holds for Clark County Council. Check out our full story at ClarkCountyToday.com. Overseeing the Interstate Bridge Replacement Project is a 12-member executive steering group. They met last Friday discussing numerous community advisory groups and equity considerations for the project. WSU Vancouver's Lynn Valenter will co-chair a citizens advisory group. This will potentially be a 25-member collaborative of regional interest groups to provide input on the project. Greg Johnson, the project administrator, shared that they have less than four years to meet a Federal Highway Administration deadline of September 30th, 2024 in order to submit the project and demonstrate significant progress. Additionally, they must submit a draft finance plan and progress report to both state legislatures by December 1st. The ESG's list of draft issues includes the need for tolling to help pay for the project and high-capacity transit in order to obtain federal funding. As of now, there was no discussion regarding a finance plan or transit. The steering group recognizes that ultimate authority for project decisions will vary based on the issue and could rest with the program administrator and DOT. Citizens can make input to the executive steering group via email or phone. For more information, go to ClarkCountyToday.com to read the full story. Monday marked the first time kindergarten students in the Battleground School District were back in the classroom. The district is bringing the youngest grade levels back in two groups four days a week for two and a half hours each day. Masks and physical distancing are required and staff is on hand to closely monitor students. All Clark County school districts have committed to bringing kindergarten students back into classrooms along with small groups of other at-risk students who will need in-person instruction. This is being done with oversight from the Clark County Public Health and ongoing communication with parents who can opt to keep their student home if they so desire. Battleground administrators also made the decision this week to delay the move to hybrid learning for high school students until at least the start of the second semester since the first possible chance students could return to the class would come right before the first semester break. 
During the nearly seven years of World War II, more than 16 million American men served in the military. Today, only around 325,000 of those men remain alive. In honor of Veterans Day, we sat down with several local men who served their country. While many survived harrowing experiences during combat, Stanley Coleman, now 94, never fired a shot in battle. Instead, he served here in the States as a radio operator for the Navy. Stanley is living proof that not every hero stormed a beach. Millions serve their country well here at home, making sure our fighting men had the tools and equipment to defeat the enemies in the Pacific and European theaters of war. And I ended up uh, from the Los Angeles area back to uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, they have a ARM school there. I wasn't particularly interested in, in radio school, but you take, you take what, what opportunities you have and do the best for them. To hear more of our interview with Stanley, head to ClarkCountyToday.com and watch for more interviews tomorrow and Thursday as well. Continuing in the spirit of Veterans Day, here's Paul Valencia with an update on a special project from the Community Military Appreciation Committee. The Community Military Appreciation Committee recently had 12 local veterans interviewed detailing their experiences in the military. That video will be shown on CVTV on Veterans Day and will be posted on CMAX website. There's also a trailer and you might see a familiar face. To all my fellow veterans, happy Veterans Day. Well, there's a look at the stories we've got for you at ClarkCountyToday.com. Be sure to check us out on social media through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube to see when stories are posted and join the conversation. You can send us any story ideas and feedback you have to our email, news at ClarkCountyToday.com. From all of us, thank you for watching. Have a great night, and we'll see you again tomorrow.